The application builder, included in Comsol Multiphysics version 5.0 and newer, facilitates the creation of specialized apps from Comsol Multiphysics models that can be used by anyone. Great for simulation engineers that want to share their models with a wider audience. Through three industrial demo apps, we will introduce you to the form editor, form objects, and the method editor, and demonstrate how you can edit parts of the app yourself. Our first demonstration features the heatsink with fins app, which would be useful in the electronics cooling industry. In this model, an airflow passes through the channel and cools off the aluminum fins which are in contact with a heat source. Now, looking at this app, we have inputs where I can change the geometry such as the fin height and the number of fins. And I have operating condition inputs where I can change the inlet velocity, temperature, and the heat source temperature. And then I have results, some information on the expected computation time, and I can also send an email message when the model's computed. I also have the graphics section, which shows the geometry, the mesh, the temperature, and the velocity. And now that I've changed the input data, I can update the geometry. And I can remesh this model. And after this, I could compute my model. So let's take a look in the model to see how this app was created. The app shown was built after this model had already been created in Comsol Multiphysics, as we can see here in the model builder. We have the material properties specified, the physics boundary conditions applied, the study step has been added, and the results plots have been customized. The application builder is fully integrated in Comsol Multiphysics. As you can see here, it has its own section in the Home tab. When I click the Application Builder button, I stay within the same window, but now I'm in the Application Builder. So let's take a look at the basic structure of this app here. The two main app building tools are forms and methods. And we will start by looking at forms, which are the platforms on which your app is built. We have the main form open, and it looks a lot like the app interface that we saw before because it is the reference form for the main window. So that means that this will be the first form that is shown when we open our app. To maintain an organized structure, this main window has text labels for the input and results and graphics titles and form collections, which are containers that hold other forms. This first collection holds five other forms for the geometry input, operating conditions, results, information, and the email message. The second form collection holds all of our graphics windows. All of those forms referenced are here in the form editor. And we can open them and take a look Now let's say I wanted to add a pressure graphics plot to my app. I can add a new form and select the graphics plot for pressure and then click OK. And my new form has been created. Now I can rename this graphics underscore results underscore pressure and then we'll have the title as pressure. So here I've created my graphics form. Then when I go back into the main form I can go to my second form collection and add the graphics results pressure plot. Finally I can test the application and here I have my pressure plot. This next app, which analyzes the payload capacity of a truck mounted crane, 
uses a wide variety of form objects and is a bit more interactive. There are these sliders, which update parameters based on a given range, and an image here that shows us how each slider affects the configuration, and a legend detailing the different parts of the crane. There's a button to update the configuration of the crane in the graphics window, and input fields to change the capacity of the cylinders, as well as an input field for the weight. Finally, the results determine what the payload capacity will be, as well as the usage of the hydraulic cylinders. So let's take a look at the different form objects used in this app. The main form is again filled with text labels and collections, but if we go into the orientation and extension form, there are text labels, equations, input fields, units, sliders, and a button. And then in the sketch form is where we have our image. And we actually have another image here. The results form has a data display and a card stack. All of these objects are added using the insert object button. And learning how to implement and use these different objects is beyond the scope of this video, but you can learn more about them in the instruction manual. Changing the layout of an app can be important when customizing it for different users. And that's why sketch mode is a really great feature. Let's say, for example, your app needs to be much thinner, but you don't care how long it is. With sketch mode, you can drag and drop your objects very easily. So here I'm using the control click to select multiple objects and then simply dragging them around the interface. I can delete these vertical lines and move the image over. And scrolling down, I will make my graphics window bigger. Now, when I preview the form, you can see that it's much thinner and a little bit longer. So this is just an example of how you can easily change the layout of your app to match the needs of the people that are using it. To introduce the method editor, we will look at the corrugated circular horn antenna simulator app. In this app, we have a row of buttons that perform different functions. The first section computes the study, resets the parameters, and generates a simulation report. The second section changes the graphics window between the geometry view, the 2D gain pattern, the 3D far field pattern, and polarization results. And the third section shows information about the app, such as the layout. So let's change some of these design parameters here to check out the reset parameters button. I will change the flare angle, make that larger, and make the horn length larger and the waveguide length as well. Now I will click geometry view to generate the new geometry. And here we can see the change geometry. Now I can click the reset parameters button confirm that I do want to do that. And again, the geometry will change. And as you can see, the parameters have been reset to their original values. So let's take a look at the reset parameters button and see how it's created with the method editor. Here we have the main form again, and I want to go into the SF command console form here we have the reset parameters button. And as you can see here in the settings window, when the button is clicked, we run the method m reset param. So going back to our application builder window, I will double click on the reset parameters method to open it. The first line of this method brings up the confirmation box asking us if we want to reset the parameters. After we click yes, the model parameters are set to their original values. So 
let's take a look at these parameters and how they were set. Instead of typing in each and every line and doing this manually, we can use this record code feature, which makes it a lot easier to add code to the method. As you can see here, we have moved into the model builder and there's this red box around the user interface showing that we are indeed recording code. So I'll go into the parameters node and change these parameters by adding a zero to each one. And as I'm doing this, the code is being added to the method editor automatically. Now that I've finished changing all of these parameters, I can stop recording and go back to the application builder. And now you can see that all of the parameters that I changed are added to the method and these match the parameters that were there before. So just to check this, I will delete the old code and test the application. Here in the application, I will change the design parameters again and I will click geometry view to generate the new geometry and the reset parameters button again, confirm yes. And as you can see, the geometry reset again. And that is a simple demonstration of how the method editor can be used to add features that will really help your coworkers when using these apps. Hopefully this demonstration has given you an overall view of how the app builder can be used and some tips on how to get started.